Well, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Prayer. It is October the 25th. And for those of you who are just coming on right now, I apologize. I'm like two minutes late. I was reading through my notes and not even paying attention. But good morning. Good morning. And um, excited this morning to uh, see those of you in church this morning that are a part of our community. And uh, if you're not part of our community, hope that you are planning on going and supporting and being a part of what your church is doing this morning and getting plugged in. And um, yeah, I'm excited, excited to uh, get together. For some reason this morning, I have a little more anticipation than even usual. So excited to do that this morning. But let's get into um, a little bit of our prayer time this morning. And of course, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, those that have been watching, we have three verses that we've continued to read each day. Uh, to continue to focus our minds and focus uh, what we are um, praying about and, and keeping our, our minds straight in all of this. I, I see that my wife just mentioned it's costume today in kids ministry today. So don't forget about that. Don't forget um, and, and enjoy. And if you uh, get to church a little bit early, you might want to walk down towards, they probably won't let you in, but towards kids ministry and check it all out. But anyway, let's uh, let's get into our verses this morning. Psalm 51.10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a loyal spirit within me. Um, Romans 12 and 18, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And Colossians 4 and 6, Let your conversation be gracious, and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. So we've been praying through um, and for leaders and especially because we're in this election cycle. And um, But one of the things we talked about just a few days ago was the fact that there are really three forms of government that God establishes in his word. And uh, government simply being a system or a group that is put to regulate or have some sort of control over people because we need that because of our sinful nature. And so first form of government that God formed is, of course, the civil government, which is, as we see, our local state, state and federal governments and, and those that make those decisions to regulate and bring safety. Um, we're going to get back starting tomorrow to praying for uh, specifically civic, civic, uh, civil government. Uh, tomorrow, if you start counting tomorrow, nine days till election. Uh, so we will continue to pray it that way. For the last few days, we've been praying for the second form of government God formed, and that's the family. And um, important for us to understand what that's supposed to look like and, and how God established that. But today, I want to take this one day and pray for the third form of government that God has formed, and that is the church. Uh, for those of you, a little trivial information. Uh, if you want to talk about church government, the, the term for that is polity. Uh, so polity is, is the, the specifically the church government. And, and I want to pray today for that because I think in all of these areas, when you really think about it, civic government, family, and church, these are really often misunderstood from a biblical standpoint. Uh, we oftentimes do it the way we feel better about it, as opposed to going back to the scripture and saying, what does the scripture actually say? And, um, and so want to, want to encourage you to maybe do a little bit of study yourself to reframe your thinking on what the Bible says about civic, civic government, what the Bible says about family, what it says about church. But let's, let's talk church for just a bit and focus, um, our prayers this morning. Obviously, it's Sunday. We're coming at the end of Pastor Appreciation Month. And so for those of you that do not go to our church, uh, hopefully you have not forgotten that scenario. Uh, and you would um, just this morning encourage uh, your church leaders and specifically your pastor. But Acts 14 and 23 tells of a scene that I want to talk through this morning to help us focus our prayers for church leadership. Acts 14 and 23. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. So in Acts 14, Paul and Barnabas have shared the gospel in Syria, specifically uh, Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. So these three different cities. So I've got this picture in my head, you know, like you could say like, 
Fruitland Park, Leesburg, Tiberias, or some, you know, these, these cities that are fairly, fairly decent, uh, fairly close to each other, um, and in this area, and they've had revival breakout. And so now they've got to put some kind of polity, some kind of a church govern, government, if you will, into place. And the system they use is an elder system. So they choose elders that are to oversee each one of the churches of these, these three different cities. And, um, and, and they do this by prayer and fasting. And, and um, when you think about it, um, you know, in, in our day and age, quite often, like when I launched our church, the, uh, to try to decide who's going to be an elder, you pray and fast, but in a lot of ways, you're looking for people that already had some sort of, maybe had some church experience a little bit, had a little, maybe even leadership experience. But I'm thinking about in this case scenario, um, if this is Gentiles that are not Jewish people, they don't have the training of the Old Testament, how hard would it have been for them to find qualified leaders, um, to, to find people to lead? So they go to prayer and fasting and say, God, you're going to have to tell us the right people, the people that are going to submit to you and that maybe are going to learn quickly um, or already have some people skills or, you know, some um, conflict resolution skills. Um, I just, I was thinking through the real humanity of this situation and that would have been pretty scary trying to put together some kind of leadership, but they go to prayer and fasting and lean on God to do that. There's also an example in church history and that is, um, in Charles Spurgeon. So I want to read this little piece of an article that I read that I found Charles Spurgeon, a spiritual powerhouse from another generation went down in church history as the Prince of Preachers and for good reason since a century after his death, he was the most widely printed and read English author. It would be no exaggeration to say that Spurgeon led thousands to faith in Christ. What was behind the success of the giant in the faith? Spurgeon himself attributed the source of his power and fruitfulness to the prayers of the saints in his church, in what he called the church's boiler room. Um, and so I, I was looking at that and thinking, you know, the early church, they prayed and they fasted to have leaders in place. S Spurgeon gives credit to his church people being in this boiler room area or this whatever their, their sort of room. And we pray on Tuesday mornings. And I think of that group that prays on Tuesday mornings um, at the church office for a couple of hours. That is a real foundation of why we are who we are. And so as we pray today, I want to give you a couple of bullet points um, that, that maybe can spawn your time to pray for church leaders, church governments, uh, whether it be pastors, elders, other leaders in the church. And so uh, here's a couple of bullet points just that, that I made to, to spawn you on or to prime the pump. First of all, that God's grace is upon their ministry. Um, it's, it's a crazy day and age. And um, the ideals and the ideas uh, of our culture have shifted. And so in trying to um, help people understand truth and, and, and hold up truth um, feels a little more difficult, uh, I think, now than when I started in ministry. Also, that their families would be protected and blessed. It is tough to lead and then still go home and lead. Because um, oftentimes those uh, in ministry or in leadership will sometimes uh, err on the side of giving their best out during the day than coming home and it being leftovers a little bit. So uh, protect and bless their families. That God would give them insight and revelation and understanding. Um, and that's a spiritual thing to me that there's an insight that... Um, I often pray a prayer of asking God to show me the invisible. In other words, I can see what's physically going on. What I need to understand is what's spiritually going on. And so pray that the leaders would have insight and revelation and understanding. Um, pray that they would have uh, prayer and, and power and purpose in what they're doing, that they would continue in that. And, and they would continue even just in the simplicity of their spiritual disciplines. Uh, which which is easy to get away from. It's easy just to prep for ministry and not do spiritual distance to keep your soul straight. And so pray that way. 
pray God uh, would give them wisdom to fulfill their actual role. And the scripture says the role of a pastor is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Um, often, for those who are leader type personalities, they find it much easier to just do it themselves as opposed to equip, which is what we are called to do as, as church leaders. And then uh, last point that I put here is just that they would bear lasting fruit through their lives and ministries and, and that they would create um, legacy, you know, that, that there would be not just a we, we the flash in the pan scenario because we're really good at that in the U.S. We, we do events and flashy things and hype things, um, but pray that there would be long lasting legacy type fruit that for years to come, you can see generations that were affected uh, because of what the ministry does. So let me take a second and pray. And um, hopefully that kind of primed the pump for you. But let's pray for um, the polity um, of our um, our area, because there are multiple great churches in our area and, and leaders and pastors that will be sort of doing their thing today. Um, but then also as a whole, um, whether it be regionally, statewide, nationwide, or to the ends of the earth, that, that um, God's leaders of his church government would have strength, power, revelation, um, and, and maybe tenacity is, is a good one to throw in there as well. So let's pray. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity we're going to have to get together with our church families and worship you and learn more about you and Maybe understand you in a deeper way, understand ourselves in a deeper way today. But God, we know it's only there and available because you have raised up leaders uh, to actually make that happen. And so we just stand in the gap this morning for pastors and elders and other church leaders um, that you have put into place, that you are using. And God, just like it must have been hard in that early church to find leaders, um, sometimes we can look at leaders and, 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 and be a little prideful and say, well, I could do it better than that. But instead, God, would you help us to submit and humble ourselves and know that you are in control and that you have put people in place for such a time as this. God, I pray for every pastor in a, specifically in our area this morning who is getting up and going over their notes and maybe has a little bit of nerves about the day or has dealt with some struggles or know there's going to be a little conflict here or there. Father, would you give them strength this morning and a tenacity to uh, do and fulfill what you have called them to do and fulfill this morning? God, for elders that, that come alongside, the, those that, that have some sort of an ear of leadership, uh, I pray, God, that you would have them remember our three verses. That, that they would pray, creating me a clean heart, and that they would pray that they'd be a peacemaker, and that they would pray that their conversations would be gracious. And so, uh, God, we just, we ask for awakening like you did in these cities back uh, when Paul and Barnabas preached. We ask for that awakening in our area. And then we ask for God that we would, we would hear you as they did in prayer and fasting in putting the right leaders in place, in, in serving and following alongside with our leaders, and then, God, you giving strength and understanding to each of those leaders to see beyond the physical, to see what is spiritually going on, to have the right concepts and ideas and programs to fulfill what you've called them to do, that they might equip the saints to do the work of the ministry that you called each one of them to do. So, God, thank you um, for our leaders. And, God, may we speak words of blessing to and over them today. We just we pray it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Love you guys. I'll see some of you at church. Others of you, enjoy your service um, and love on your leaders today.